Hi, it's Mitz. I just wanted to apologize in advance because this video is not really a tutorial. I've made several mistakes in this video and the battery gets cut off many times and it's just all over the place and I feel bad if you're watching this as a tutorial. Um, you can see my me making the mistakes and see how I try to fix them but it's not really a step-by-step -step tutorial and so I apologize in advance it's more of like a rambly journal with me type of thing so anyways thank you so much for stopping by Hi it's Mitz from My Life Mitz thank you so much for stopping by I am back again this is episode number three I'm actually filming on the same exact day so that's why you might see a lot of the same, uh, same coffee. <laughs> but anyways, I know I said in the next video, in episode number three, I will be uh, stitching into the signatures, or stitching in the signatures. But before I do that, I remember I need to, like, uh, if I want to put some envelopes in there, I need to do that before I stitch them inside. So I think I will grab the envelopes that I want to include in my pages. I like to include these smaller pieces and washi tape them together. So for example, if I washi taped this here, I can stitch through the washi tape and this will act like as a page. So let's do that for now. I am I want to use a thicker washi. You don't have to go from top to bottom but of course it will be more secure that way yeah I'm just going to wash it to the other side I might use some different color ones I hope you enjoyed episode 1 and 2 I hope it wasn't too boring for you I tried to talk through what I'm thinking but then for some reason I can't seem to talk and do at the same time so there's one so what I mean by stitching through I'll take a signature here for example if I decide to put it in the middle here I can st stitch through the washi tape and um, it will be stuck inside the book notebook here or you could obviously stitch the physical envelope let me take an envelope for example it's just one piece of envelope you can glue it washi tape it later like you don't have to have another uh, envelope or piece of paper on the other side like this one so there's various ways of attaching envelopes to your pages you can just washi tape it here here like it will work as a tip in But yeah, so I think this one I will put in a different signature. It's so hot. I know I said that in my last video, but it really, really is. I know I shouldn't be complaining, but it's not even like full on summer yet and I'm already like dying. It's just so hot. Actually, I think this envelope is quite long. I might have to cut off at the top there. It's okay. Oh, it might be okay. So leave that there. Let's see if there's any other envelopes that I want to include. I might just uh, tip in like these smaller ones. These smaller pieces of paper you can always fold. And you can attach the envelope here, and then you can stitch through this folded part here. I should have done that. I can wash and tape it here. I suppose I could still use this, even though there's a fold in it now. But and I'm just going to use this one. Or maybe I'll use this one here. There's not that much color to it, so. I need to get myself a white washi tape. They're out there, but just always forget to pick one up.
So this past weekend was my son's birthday. He had two birthday cakes. We had one on his actual day um, back home and then we went to my in-laws and then he had another cake there so he was so excited. And we picked up this huge uh, car, I don't know what it's called, it's, it's Hot Wheels car, uh, what is it called, a car garage set toy thing. He is in love with it, which I'm happy, I'm happy he likes the toy. But of course my daughter is so curious so she crawls towards it and she always like grabs the cars or grabs the part of the the toy the garage and she breaks it and then he gets so upset um, but anyways so yeah you can add that let's see where I want to put this one maybe in this here you just slip it in so your envelope is here I think that's, I will uh, make these smaller ones, I got this in a swap as well. If you want to participate in swaps, sometimes I get this question is where do I go for swaps or happy mail. I suggest you to join the Facebook groups, there's a, so many Facebook groups out there but the ones that I participate uh, for the swaps is called Trashy Junk Journals and they do several swaps. I want to say several swaps a month, but I know for sure at least once a month they will do uh, themed swaps. So I suggest you go on there and take a look around. These are such cute envelopes. I try to um, look for like children's books. Of course they're really hard to find here, but I think this is perfect. I want to use maybe for the junk journal insert that I want to create for my son. Uh, and maybe I'll add some in here as well a little bit later on. You're here today to look at me do the signature stitch. I am no expert and I've never done this before. This is going to be my first time. I hope I don't screw up too much on camera and I hope that the needle will puncture through. I mean, it's okay if I screw up, right? Then you get to see how I fix it or try to fix it anyways. So I think... Um, I will, I know I penciled in that, penciled that in as a guideline, so I think I'm going to shift it a little bit over a couple centimeters and just do that. So this is filmed on another day. I actually ended up taking some of the papers and elements that I had and decided to sew some of my bits and pieces. This beautiful lace bits is from uh, Nazi. And I just, I, I don't want people to feel discouraged if you don't have a sewing machine and that's why I didn't want to add sewing elements in the beginning but then I decided, you know, I'm going to be working in this junk journal for the month of July and I want to really enjoy the process so I did end up doing a bit of sewing and uh, added a little bit of like lace and doilies and little things here and there. This once again is from, this lace is from Nazi and it's really nice wide lace you can add as a, uh, like a pocket. And I don't know how people do it but I usually, I just, <laughs> you can see there I attached some tape runner on the bottom so that it stays in place. I'm sure there's got to be a better way, maybe use a paper clip or something like that but if you have any recommendations please leave them in the comments down below. So I sewed some of the papers and I have just randomly placed them. I always make sure that I do a flip through of the pages to make sure that they're all on the right way. Sometimes I've done mistakes in the past where the pages are upside down, which is not a big deal. It's just a junk journal anyways, but uh, it's always nice to just flip through before you actually sew your pages in. So that one is done. Uh, I. I think there's so there's two other signatures here and these pages here are the ones that I've kind of added some sewing elements to and I want to add them to my signatures. So 
So there's one here. Just going to quickly flip through to see if I like the layout, if something is missing. I think I want to change that. Maybe I'll put it somewhere in the front. Maybe here. Make sure all the pages are upright. And I mentioned in my other video that I think I want to trim it, but because this is a fabric journal and the fabric is going to uh, hug it, like it's not going to be a hardcover book where you see all the pieces hanging out uh, because the cover is going to, there's like a there's like a closure to it. I think I'm just going to leave it as is and if, if anything it looks really cute. All these different various pieces hanging out. So. so now I will show you how to, I guess, how I punch the holes. I just used, let me take this over here so that I don't lose it. I have this uh, hole puncher from Amy Tangerine. Uh, if I remember the name of the set, I will list it down below in the description bar. But uh, it's basically like a it came with this alphabet stencil and it was on sale so I decided to get it and it's perfect because it has like three different color threads and three needles as well as the puncher and the like the piercer as well as the piercing mat um, so it works it worked out great I just used a scrap piece of paper and marked down here three lines so that it will be consistent I just eyeballed it. I didn't really measure anything. I just eyeballed it. Um, but actually, you probably don't need my fabric cover at this time. So we've confirmed that we like all the pages where they are. It's a good idea to use a clip to hold them in place. I'm always, I'm not very good at the punching, the piercing part, the holes always kind of, I don't know, I, I don't know if I'm doing it incorrectly, but I feel like the holes are always lopsided or one part is off the spine or, but it's okay, it's just my journal, it's not like for sale, uh, but yeah, maybe I should clip this side as well. I'm just going to grab this and make the same lines, same marks. So here, here, and here. So there's the three dots there. Hopefully you can see it's not too dark. And I'm just going to grab the piercer. I don't know if that's what it's called. Um, I have another one that's in my other pouch over there, but it's from the, it's from Daiso. It's a little bit thicker than this, so I wanted to give this a try, and it's really nice. All right, so let's, and then I just kind of wiggle it, and maybe that's why I'm, I'm making a mistake by wiggling. That's why it kind of goes off center, but there's that. It's really easy. I just wiggled it and pushed down. I guess if you have a lot of pages, it might uh, it might be a little bit more difficult. But because these signatures are not very thick, it seems to be okay. You can see there. And one more here. You have these regular embroidery threads. This one came with the three different colors and it matches perfectly. I couldn't believe it. It matches the cover perfectly. It's crazy, eh? <laughs> um, and these embroidery threads, they usually, like if you unravel them, they have six threads. And I unraveled it and I thought I would do three, three. Like uh, th I, I would split it into three like three little threads but it was still too thick so I did 
decided to just do two threads. I hope I'm making sense when I say that. So two strings out of the six, and then it um, fed through the hole of the needle quite nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if there's a proper way of doing it. I just I usually just start from the middle going in uh, towards the outside and you just pass it through. I don't go all the way. I always leave a little bit behind. Sorry, I forgot to mention when I was measuring this thread, I did it. I measured I believe three lengths. One, two, about three lengths book lengths. I don't know if there's um, proper measurements for these signatures, but for three holes I just measured it three lengths. And it should be okay. So I start from the middle hole. I po poked it outwards. You know what I just realized? <laughs> I did not pass it through my fabric journal. <laughs> Okay, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> oh gosh, and I was like making sure that in my mind, I was like, make sure you punch the holes in your fabric journal and you pass the holes through your fabric journal when you're making the video and I totally forgot. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad we're doing this together. Um, so right now there's three signatures. So I want to make three holes, like three sets of holes. So I think I'm going to grab my little guy here. And I don't know if you remember, I made a pencil marking. So I'm going to just mark three sets of holes. Let's see what color. I'll do it in brown so it's more noticeable. A centimeter off. You can see that three dots there, about a centimeter off. I don't know if it's going to be straight. Hopefully, it won't be too crooked, but. If we were to have this on the last signature, the cover is going to be a little bit short. So maybe I will scrap that last one and I will go that way is nicer. I'm gonna go this way. See, I put a hole on this side, but if I do that then the this part is gonna to be too it's not going to be wide enough, so I'm going to make the holes this way. So I'm just going to scrap that first far right one and then go towards this side. Yeah, so it's going to be like that. So there's going to be a little bit sticking up, but that's okay. Let me make the holes. So we made this one here. I'm gonna make the one on this side. So let's cut this and start again because I made a mistake. And I'm glad that you can see that it's not a big deal. We can just restring it. There we go. So we have the two threads. Oh, there's just one there. I think. So this is the one with the three threads. I'm just going to take it apart and unravel it. This is just the embroidery thread that was part of the kit. But I'm sure you can purchase embroidery thread in any craft sh craft store. I know that the dollar store or the Hyakuin shops here. Uh, have the embroidery threads as well, so perhaps you have them in your dollar stores too. And I'm just going to pass it through. Oh, just one went through. Let's try that again. 
I know it's a little gross, but uh, my mom taught me just kind of <laughs> lick the tip and then it's, uh, it's, uh, it gives it a nice fresh end. So yeah, okay, so let's try this again. Uh, I don't know if I should, uh, maybe I should clip it again. So that the holes are probably not aligned anymore now that I took. Anyways, let's try and see if it'll go through. I find that it's difficult, like once the lines are not, are kind of shifted, I just go one by one, like one paper at a time, or a couple papers at a time, and just pass the needle through. It's really time consuming, but uh, this one doesn't have a lot of like, pages, so it should be okay. It's fine. I'm sweating buckets. It's crazy. Okay. And hopefully this is aligned. Okay, guys, I did the same exact problem yet again. The same exact problem I did again. So, okay, so now I'm going to pass it through the hole. And I'm scared that I kind of already made it wide because I went through it so many times. Make sure it's nice and tight. There. Don't forget to make sure you have the right side up as well when you're doing this. So just checking to make sure that's the right side up. So make sure that it's tight. Pass it through the hole again. Sorry, I'm not too sure where my video got cut off there. <clears throat> So once signature is sewn in, oh, I made so many mistakes, but I am glad that you're able to follow along. Hopefully it's not too boring or crazy, but yeah, it looks like that. The thread passed through the middle. I sewed this signature twice without sewing the fabric cover to it, so <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's do the second one. Hopefully the camera won't cut off. Uh, so like I said, I unraveled the embroidery thread in... The embroidery thread has six strands and there's... I decided to take two out of the six and just use that as one. I've already punched the holes in my signature. Where did the needle go? Here we go. I think this part I'm just going to speed up because uh, I'm sure you've already seen a lot already. Just make sure it's the correct way that this side is up. And it is. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm always off center for some reason. I don't know if you have any tips on piercing, <laughs> please let me know. Okay, so this is going to be my middle one. And I think I'm going to speed this up.
for the battery cutout once again. I just wanted to quickly show you the finished book. Uh, well, it's not really fi fully finished yet. This is my first time doing the signatures on a fabric spine, I guess, like a fabric uh, cover. And you can obviously see that it is not even, and it kind of bugs me, so I should have, now that I know, I should have, instead of just eyeballed it, I should have actually measured it out properly and uh, used a ruler. But yeah, it looks like that, and I just can't believe how close the color, like the, ma the thread matches the fabric so well. So I'm just going to quickly do a flip of the pages. So originally I was going to add the signature in front, uh, but I decided if I did that then the this portion will get shorter and then the pocket of course will get shorter. So I decided not to do that and I added the signatures on the back side uh, so that the um, uh, this pocket will be a lot will remain a lot bigger. So before the battery runs out again, just quickly flip through the pages. This one has two pockets. I am very thankful to Nazi who sent me these really pretty fabric samples and she labeled them too. She said this fabric sample would be good for like bookmarks and this fabric sample would be good for like pockets and this one here, this really wide one is perfect for the pockets. I went to the fabric shop and I couldn't find, uh, well I was looking for fabric in general, uh, I think next time I will look for these kinds of ones. And here, I kind of noticed later on that it's kind of loose, like you can see it's not as tight, it's probably because I, ha I didn't tie it tight enough, either that or my hole is too big. Uh, but anyways, you could also glue like the ends here and make it into a pocket, that way you don't even know where the middle of the signature is and the thread will be covered up. This is actually a pocket here, a top loading pocket. It folds out. Oh no, I stitched it. <laughs> I guess I could rip it or keep it as is and leave it as a pocket. We'll see what I do there. Just quickly show you the different pages. There's vintage book paper. This one, I didn't uh, glue this side because I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave it as a pocket or not. Or if I wanted to glue it down, so I'll decide that later. There's wrapping paper, vintage wrapping paper, comic book paper, exercise paper from exercise books. This one is from National Geographic. Packaging as well, from a book, some maps children's book, some paper I received from a swap, uh, I'm guessing this is like wax paper, some Japanese washi as well, oh I'm running low on battery, <laughs> quickly flip through that, and yeah there's a pocket, There's. I love the fact that there's pockets on both sides so if I'm busy a certain day I can just add a whole bunch of ephemera and things that I want to document into these pockets and I can always grab them a little bit later on. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be doing or working in this book for One Book July so I hope you follow along. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!